Hey guys, I'm James Walton. I'm the fourth through sixth grade pastor, and I'm so excited to study the life of Peter with you guys today as we look and find out what it means to have simple faith. We're going to be looking at Peter's life and how through the ups and downs, he continues to fine tune his faith to simply trust in Jesus and the power that comes through his name. So today, as we go into worship, let's begin to practice some of that simple faith, acknowledging that God is with us, that he is worshiped through our praise, and let's go into that together. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you that you have, you have cleansed us of our sins, that you bring us into the throne room. And God, right now, as we go into this time of worship, God, that even though it's not what we're used to, Lord, it is something that glorifies your name. Lord, that where two or more are gathered, you are present. And so, Lord, we just want to lift up who you are, acknowledging that you are the God of this universe. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hey church, it was so great worshiping with you. My name is Kelly and we just have a few announcements we'd like to let you know. First and foremost, we hope that you are enjoying our online church services, but we also want to invite you to our Sunday morning gatherings at 9 to 10 a.m. There's no registration required. We just ask that you bring masks and stay socially distanced. It's all outside, so we would love for you to join us. There's a time of worship, teaching, and prayer, so we hope to see you soon. And Secondly, our mission and community impact team has been had a lot going on. We've had our food drive, which was a huge success. So thank you for those who donated. We've had our human trafficking awareness night. We've also uh, helped out with an extreme makeover and a shelter for survivors of trafficking. And this upcoming Tuesday, we have a night for Lebanon titled Rebuilding Education for Refugees. It's Tuesday, 7 p.m. on Zoom, but we're hearing live from Lebanon. So you don't want to miss it. Please join us. All details are on the website. And so Joseph has a few more announcements for us. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, two more quick announcements for you. And first is that we're going to continue with a series of conversations that we started a couple weeks back. It's called Sacred Rhythms, and it's examining deeper the spiritual disciplines. Uh, that's going to be hosted by Jeff Moore, and he'll be joined by a number of different guests. So head online to find out more information. But the 22nd of this month will be our next one, examining knowledge and memorization. It'll be great. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and lastly, great news from the production and worship community here. Um, we've cut all of the worship songs into individual songs. And if you head over to our, our website, you can go to our YouTube channel or our Vimeo channel, and you can find um, all of the worship that we've produced thus far during COVID available for you to worship at home. So go on, check it out. And um, we're going to continue with our tithes and our offerings right now. Let's continue our worship through our giving. Our regular tithes and financial offerings are one of the ways that we express our trust in God. Through them, we also demonstrate gratitude for all He's given to us. And they're how we can participate in tangibly communicating God's love to our community, both locally and abroad. I'm going to pray for us, and then I'd invite you to pause the service and participate through either texting to give at the number on the screen or giving through our website. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you for your continued care for us. We want our lives to honor you. We want to reflect your glory as individuals and as the church. And we want to bring your light into the world by sharing our financial resources with the broken, the hurting, and the poor. Please receive our gifts that we offer now gratefully. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to tell you guys about a story of when I was traveling through the country of Peru. You see, at the time, I was living down in Chile as a missionary with an organization called YWAM. And I was going up to Peru to meet a friend, and we're going to do a kids' games training there for about 100 different churches out in the middle of the jungle. Now, my friend was Anton Van Veen. We met up in Lima, Peru. And when he got there, we went out to eat some epic ceviche. We went to this sweet little restaurant. And there we drank some Inca Cola, which is like the best drink ever, until people tell you it tastes like bubble gum and then it ruins it forever. But we had this epic meal and then we, we left to go back to our hostel. Now in that season of my life, I was really being challenged with my own faith and just how I live out my faith. And there was a man that I met who was in the organization with me who was traveling through and he really began to challenge me with the responsibility that we have as children of God to live out our faith because of the access to the Father that we have through faith in Jesus, that we could really bring transformation to people's lives if we acted out on our faith. And so here Anton and I are, we're walking back to our hostel from this restaurant and we pass this elderly man. He's sitting on the ground with his back up against the wall and it's pretty clear and evident that he's crippled in some way. And we, we both see him and acknowledge him and then we kept on walking. And about 50 feet down the road, we stopped and I turned to Anton and I said, do you think it's okay? Do you think it's all right that with our faith, we can see something like that and not do anything? Don't you think that because of the faith we have, we are responsible to, to act out on our faith because we believe that in Jesus' name, things can be changed, that we have the power in Jesus' name to potentially pray for this man and see his life transformed. Anton agreed with me and so we went back to pray for that man. 
Today, we're going to be looking at the life of Peter because Peter was a man who had simple faith. But like many of the other disciples, he was a guy who had his ups and his downs. And like all the disciples, his faith was being stretched and grown by what Jesus was able to do, but it was also being fine-tuned to trust simply in Jesus. So we want to look at his life to help us understand like what are those things. Now for Peter, he was such a legend, right? He had so many different stories of where he had great successes, but immediately followed up by really low lows. And so let's take a look at some of his highs and some of his lows in his life. The main standout to me, right, is that highlights Peter's faith is that he was one of the disciples that walked on water, right? When Jesus was walking on the water, Peter saw him and acknowledged him and he said, call me out. And so Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on water when none of the other disciples did. It's such an amazing act of faith. And so here Peter is walking on water, but what begins to happen? He begins to look at the wind and the waves and he begins to sink and he cries out to the Lord, 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 save me. That's just one of the, the simple realities of Peter, that he would have these great like faith moments of like walking on water, but then soon after he would be sinking. Now in Matthew The thing about Peter and the reason why we're looking at Peter's life is because through this series, we're talking about what does it mean to be the church? Now, Peter is the guy that the church was built on. In Matthew 16, Jesus says this about Peter. Matthew 16, 18, he says, and I tell you that you are Peter, which means rock in Greek. So that stands out. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The way that Jesus saw Peter is he saw him as like the foundation of what he was building the church on. And when we look at Peter's life, it was full of faith. But just to highlight Peter's ups and downs, shortly after this verse, Jesus asked, or right before this verse, Jesus asked them, and he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter responding in verse 16 says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus is like, that's right, Peter. Like, you didn't know that for yourself, but God revealed that to you. And so this big high, right? But then shortly after, Jesus is explaining to him that he's going to go to the cross, that he's going to die, that he's going to give up his life. And Peter pulls him aside and he says to him, he says, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But what does Jesus say to him? He says, get behind me, Satan. Like he just went from like, dude, God is revealing this stuff to you to being called Satan. Like these ups and these downs in Peter's life. Now what's happening in Peter is that he's realizing that this faith thing that he has isn't just a confidence that things will work out well. Not, it's not rooted in himself. It's, it's simply about who Jesus is. And again, his faith is being stretched and grown as Jesus reveals to him this reality of who he is as the Messiah, the Savior. So Peter's struggle doesn't end there with his faith, right? He's still figuring it out. And it comes to the Last Supper. This is kind of the final kind of up and down with Peter's life, but one of the major ones where Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross and he tells them um, that they're all going to deny him. In Matthew 26, 34, Uh, or in Matthew 26, he talks about how all the disciples are going to disown him. But Peter stands up and he says, I will never disown you. I will never leave you, right? But in Matthew 26, 34, Jesus says, truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Now in Peter's mind, the way that he's been practicing his faith, he's like, I got this. I'll do this. This is who I am. And it's all about himself, But what he's going to come to realize is it's not about him. It's all about Jesus. And so sure enough, in Luke 22, 60, but uh, Peter was in a conversation with some people and they began to recognize him as one of Jesus' disciples. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Here's another low, low of Peter where he messed up, where his faith was rooted in himself and not in Jesus. And he denied Jesus. Now that's a big deal. Jesus even talked about, if you deny me, I will deny you before the father. Like this must've been life shattering for Peter. But in Peter's simple faith, what he's coming to realize is that it's not about him, it's about Jesus. And so when Jesus is raised from the grave, uh, he reveals himself to the disciples. I mean, imagine how Peter felt in that moment. 
But Peter still, you can tell by just the way that he acts that he's still resonating with this reality that he failed, that he denied Jesus. And so even after Jesus reveals himself, he goes back and he goes back to the thing that he came from. He goes back to fishing. But there Jesus meets them. He comes to the disciples. He cooks them a meal. Peter jumps out of the boat and swims to be with him. But then Jesus does something amazing that is important here for us to understand in the story about Peter is that he pulls Peter aside and in Luke, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the chapter where we're at, but it says, when they finished e- eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And what Jesus begins to do in the life of Peter is he begins to reinstate him. Despite his failures, he begins to continue to give him responsibility that he has as somebody who has faith in Jesus. And he roots Peter's faith not in anything that he has done, not in the greatness of himself, the confidence of himself, but rather simply in who Jesus is and what Jesus says about Peter. So we see this story and, and this reality begins to set in in Peter's life. As we went through Acts 2 this last week, we saw that Peter, when the Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit filled, Peter stands before the crowd and confidently begins to declare faith in Jesus. In Acts 2.36, he says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And so that brings us into the scripture today that I want us to study. And we're in Acts chapter three. It goes like this. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at about three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When Peter and John, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now, look at what Peter said. In this moment, he realizes, and not even in this moment, but he declares confidently that it's nothing about what he has. He has nothing to give this man of himself, but simply of the faith in Jesus. And he calls this man to walk. Chapter three, verse seven, it says, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them up to the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Now, look at Peter's description at what makes this man's hold. Chapter three, verse 16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man who you see now and know was made strong, it is Jesus's name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you all can see. It was faith that comes through Jesus' name that healed this man. Guys, I I believe that our church, the church, is built upon Peter's simple faith. And so today I wanna go through three things that really might keep us from having simple faith like Peter. And so let's study some of those things. The first thing is that we see this in Peter's life most truly, right? Is that he messed up a lot. But one thing Peter didn't let him do, especially in practicing faith that day, is he didn't let his failures disqualify him. So often we will mess up in our life. So often we will mess up in our walk of faith. But the reality is, is that Jesus's blood is sufficient for us. That even though we mess up, he is still calling us to have simple faith in him. Because in Peter's journey, it wasn't about what he could do. It wasn't about his knowledge. It wasn't about his own godliness. In fact, in Acts 3, 12, it says, when Peter saw the crowd coming towards them, he said, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us if by our own power or godliness, we made this man walk. 
Peter recognizes it's nothing to do with him. It's everything to do with Jesus. And friends, the reality is, is when you sin or mess up, your forgiveness has nothing to do with you or your own godliness. Your forgiveness comes simply by Jesus' blood. That is how you are forgiven. And Jesus reinstated Peter even when he messed up, when he denied Jesus. And Peter could still practice simple faith. And so we can't let our failures disqualify us. Today in our culture, so often, you know, I hear so many people declaring such like epic truth, but then maybe they say something a little bit wrong. And because our culture is such this cancel culture, we'll completely write that person off. But that's not how Jesus does it. Just look at the story of Peter when he says, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. And then seconds later, he's called Satan by Jesus' own mouth. Now, was that the end of Peter's story? No. He was on a faith journey where he's learning to put his faith simply in Jesus. So we can't let our failures disqualify us. If you feel that your failures are disqualifying you, then there's something that you can do. It's simply find a friend or even quietly alone, personally go to Jesus, confess your sin, and let him reinstate you just the way that he reinstated Peter. The second thing that's gonna keep us from having simple faith like Peter is when we as a church begin to underestimate our own individual value, a part of the body of Christ. I have the gift and opportunity of working full time for the church. What that means for me is that every weekend and quite frankly, five days a week, I'm seeking God, God, what do you wanna teach my students? How do you wanna reveal yourself? And I'm constantly given the opportunity to practice my faith. That's one of the gifts I have of working in the church. But for you, even if you're not on staff at a church, even if you're not on leadership, you need to identify ways where you can practice your faith because you are a part of the body of Christ. You are the church just as much as I am. We all make up the body of Christ together. And so if you begin to underestimate your own value, if you begin to say, oh, well, that's for the people who work for the church or that's for the leadership, no, that'll keep you from practicing simple faith because Jesus sees you as qualified. Jesus sees you as more than enough. Jesus sees you as a high priest. So therefore, walk with simple faith, no matter who you are. You are a part of this church. You are a part of the body of Christ. And we need to know that. We can't underestimate our value. And so if you're really beginning to identify that you are underestimating your own value, there's something you can do. Begin to identify ways that you can regularly exercise your faith. Maybe that's attending a prayer gathering weekly. Maybe that looks like going out to share your faith. Or maybe that's just being intentional about sharing your faith or practicing your faith weekly by not letting many days go by without stepping out in some way to practice simple faith. The third and last point that I want to bring us to is this reality that sometimes we let the outcome define our faith. Now in that story about Anton and I, we walked back to that man and we, we crept down on the ground with him. We began to talk with him. And then we asked him if he would like to walk again. And we asked him to let us pray for him. And in our broken Spanish, we began to pray for him. And then we prayed in Jesus' name and then we invited him to stand. And we said, in Jesus' name, stand, just like Peter and John. We grabbed his hands and we began to pull him up and his face, his countenance began to change. His smile began to rise. His ankle was like turned sideways and it began to straighten out and it began to stand up and lift his weight. And then within an instant, it was like the weight of the world and sin came back on his face. His face drooped back down. He looked towards the ground. His ankle went from being straight to turning back in sideways. And he sat down on the ground, disappointed, broken, and sad. Anton and I were just, our minds were blown. We're like, what did we just witness? We thought we saw healing raising him up. And then in a moment, he's back to sitting on the ground. What happened? What changed? We had no idea. And it was such a blur. We began, we kept talking with him. We kept praying. We wanted to try again. Suddenly this woman came and grabbed him and, and put him on a bus and whisked him away. And Anton and I were just left there confused. So what? Do we let the outcome define our faith? 
Do we begin to believe that Jesus doesn't heal us? Do we begin to believe that there's no power in Jesus' name? Do we, do we stop stepping out in faith? No. We can't let outcomes define our faith, but rather we need to continue to practice the simple faith of Peter that there is power in Jesus' name. Now, we don't know what happened in that man's life, but we trust that there is power in his name. And so sometimes when we let our circumstances or when we let how things happen define our faith, then that'll keep us from having simple faith like Peter. And so no matter what happens, no matter the circumstances, we need to continue to look towards the Bible to give us the truth about who Jesus is, who completely reveals the heart of the Father trusting that he loves us, trusting that he hears us, trusting that there is power simply in his name and faith that comes through it. And so guys, I hope that these three things begin to help you practice simple faith like Peter. So what was Peter's simple faith rooted in? That no matter what he does, no matter what you do, Jesus will continue to be Lord and Savior. So don't let your failures disqualify you. That simple faith can be practiced by anyone, even a fisherman like Peter. And finally, no matter the outcome, Jesus is still trustworthy that he is still good. So friends, church, what it looks like to be the church and reemerge in the culture and society, we need to practice simple faith like Peter. He is the rock that the church was built on. And for us in these days, we should have simple faith like him. So let me pray for you. And let's seek Jesus to be fully reliable. Let's believe that there is power simply in his name. Jesus, we declare that you are Lord and Savior. We declare that our salvation has nothing to do with us, but simply everything that you've done in the cross. Lord, that your blood is sufficient to forgive us of our sins. Lord, that you are trustworthy and good, no matter the circumstances in our life, no matter the outcome. Lord, we can put our faith fully in you. So Jesus, we pray for the church, that the church would rise up with simple faith, that Lord, we will begin to see miracles just like Peter saw in raising people who are crippled up to their feet, God, that we would give sight to the blind, Lord, that we would see our communities transformed by your love and by the power in your name. We pray this all, Jesus, in that name, amen.
So church, let's be intentional to practice our faith. Let's look for opportunities where we can declare the name of Jesus and watch the power in his name and the faith that comes through it change and transform our world. I encourage you guys to seek him, to not let your failures disqualify you and to not let you feel any less part of the body of Christ because you don't work for the church, but rather understanding that anyone can practice simple faith and see God move in powerful ways. Guys, I look forward to seeing how we become even more like the early church in these days. May God bless you and keep you and guide you in having simple faith in Jesus' name.